As part of its commitment to developing the Nigerian and Greek ecosystem, Africa Exchange Commodities Limited hosted the second edition of its Cold Cash Crop Session at the 2019 Social Media Week. It brought together stakeholders in the agric, finance, and technology space and focused on the team, payment systems, the rural experience. Moderated by Wale Famurewa, a notable Nigerian financial journalist, it featured a presentation from Ineka Eze of Dalbeck Consulting on the opportunities, challenges, and prospects for scaling the activities of rural smallholder farmer groups. One of the issues we've seen uh, is that challenge with infrastructure across the country, particularly as we get into rural areas. So how do you think of making sure that this trend, which is happening in many other countries, continues to happen and grow in Nigeria? And then finally, digital financial services, or DFS, is really starting to evolve beyond just mobile money. So you're seeing a lot more applications um, coming out. I think the question now is how do you actually bring many of these products and services who are normally targeting urban markets to rural markets and particularly to rural farmers. I guess a year and a half ago, Dahlberg conducted a study across six different countries, Nigeria being one of them, where we did nationally representative surveys, we did human-centered design, immersive research, and we started, started to understand what are the different segments that exist in terms of accessing finance. Uh, in Nigeria, we came up with six different segments, and each of those has a persona. I'm going to talk you through a little bit of what we have been found, which I think is important as a bit of context as we think about who are we actually designing for. So you might think that you just have one person who is this rural farmer in Nigeria, but actually what we're finding is there's a lot of diversity and a need to actually think about solutions that tailor the different segments in the market, rather than saying, it's one rural farmer, here's one product, and oftentimes that's what you see uh, in terms of the solution design. So this one segment here called traditional believers, and what we found is it's really 12% of the total Nigerian population, if you look at the adults, so about 24 million people, um, primarily lower middle class um, to poor in terms of the socioeconomics, highly religious, and predominant rural. So I think this is quite important when we start looking at agriculture is laying over the, the rural population segments alongside the, the agriculture. Some of what came up is, one, they really don't use financial services frequently, um, whether that's formal or informal, and they struggle to pay bills. So these are not very cash-rich people, but um, some things that could be quite interesting to know, they have limited aspirations. And so this gets to some of the work we did, which went beyond demographic to actually figure out what are the psychometric, social, and behavioral um, elements that make up somebody's perhaps behavior towards financial services and products. They're less open and consider themselves less dependable. So if you're a lender and you're saying, okay, this is somebody who doesn't pay their bills, is not dependable, and they are saying that they're less dependable, is this perhaps my target market or or not? What would I actually do in terms of serving this, this person? And then the other thing, the last point, which I didn't put in bold, but they have less trust in institutions in terms of banks and people than the average. So you have to get through to them in terms of trust in order to serve this type of market segment. Panelists explored how investments, digitization, enabling policies and collaborations can transform the rural areas and boost productivity for the small holder. The key gap we've seen is there's a core infrastructure that is missing, which is telecommunications. Since 20, 2001 till date, we've seen great increase in, in technology telecommunication adoption in Nigeria. But it's been limited to a selected part of the economy. When you go to where farmers cultivate their lands the most, you discover that there's absolutely little or no telecommunication facilities there. So there are some communities you go to that you won't be able to call out, and people will wonder, are you still in this world? Because they can't reach you, right? And we're saying this Nigeria, where some people owe two or three phones. How do we solve that problem? To be financially included, for example, you need a unique phone number. How do you get a unique phone number when you don't have telecommunication facilities in your, where you reside? And these are the issues that we need to find solutions to because this is a segment of the economy that is driving growth in the country but is least invested in. Less than 3% of bank's credit goes to this sector. 
But yes, we all complain that we don't have alternative, alternative investment classes. These are the things that we need to put in place to ensure that this sector is well funded, this sector is financially included, and we can put a whole lot of other solutions, other products. You talk about the cultivating that group, yeah? They need products, but the products cannot be made available to them if you don't have a core financial service framework or infrastructure around them. Hearing from Aki, um, I think we need to start, um, we need to stop seeing the, on the, the, the fact that some areas are unserved and underserved as a permissible excuse for technology not to be penetrated in there. Um, yes, telecommunications is deeply penetrating. Um, the world is the number of new technologies that are coming up today. Um, there are more offline deep penetrating technologies available today, which essentially help you to create ecosystems of transactions and offline currency and then leverage on agency banking as an example to do the conversion or the transmission from the offline space into the bank economy. The problem is Nigeria is poor and we don't need to be poor if we try to coordinate things a little bit better. And I'll tell you what I mean by this. Right now, everyone in this room can actually be part of the solution by thinking about ways to invest in agriculture rather than always just putting your money just in nonsense, right? So if you think, and I, I say that honestly, like the average um, Nigerian does not necessarily, is not really now thinking around how uh, to invest, even for themselves, to build wealth, right? So people spend a lot, consumption is very high, and we're not thinking of wealth building. Now, I'm talking about that from one side. Um, if all you do is you leave your money in your bank accounts at zero, you're not building any wealth. However, there are actually ways that you could build wealth for yourself, provide access to these farmers, and guess what? Nigeria will be richer because the people investing will be richer, and then we can feed ourselves, right? So I tend to think that access to finance is the big problem that we need to crack for agriculture that will unlock everything else. Neka Eze also speaks on improving service and infrastructure in the rural areas. Um, one of the things that we keep finding out is that the knowledge and information is a particularly keen gap, particularly where you're talking about financial service providers, um, whether that's commercial banks, microfinance institutions, or others. So how do you actually provide information about the smallholder farmer, how they actually transact, how they spend on a daily basis, but finding information and actually sharing that. That's part of why the human account, that's part of why the human account is such a, um, important resource for um, the community where you actually have an online data source for Nigeria you have 2,000 respondents that have given information about how they spend their belief in institutions everything from their behaviors towards financial inclusion all the way through to their attitudes towards institutions so I think that's quite a useful sort of foundation point is, is information I think the next one is the question that we started to discuss around partnership so how do you actually bring together the different types of service providers so that it's not too competitive so does everyone have to build their own agent network own information own uh, lending platform or do you actually find different people that can come together and collaborate to serve smallholder farmers so I think those two is what we've seen in other markets to be really important to, to moving the needle um, and then I think the next one is starting to address some of those regulatory issues, many of which are currently outlined in the National Financial Inclusion Strategy. So whether that's around identity, whether that's around sort of figuring out the land challenges um, and land registration, which was one of the things that we had discussed um, during the session as well. Business development for Apex Nigeria, Mr. Akinka Akintunde, speaks on the essence of the event. Payment systems are one of the pain points we've identified in engaging with smallholder farmers. And this basically due to the high transaction cost farmers incur when they are transacting. Remember, when you talk about payment systems, you, you need to identify areas where, where farmers are and how to put a payment solution around the place to be able to engage them and put a solution around what they do. Now, if you don't have banks, ATM machines, agency banks in place, 
there's no way you can provide solutions to these small order farmers and their transaction costs will be highly increased, right? With a high transaction cost accrued to the small order farmers, you are further eroding the value they are getting from their produce which they are selling to a structured market. If you put in a place, a structure in place that ensure that reduced transaction cost is what goes to the farmer, they increase the overall value accrued to the small order farmer. For us, we are building a structure that will enable capital market players, investment houses, stock brokerage houses to be able to invest in agriculture without necessarily being exposed to the full range of risk inherent in the sector, right? So you see us forming partnership with a lot of government regulatory bodies to ensure that structures required to, to de-risk the system are in place and we can leverage on that to drive that asset class creation for the benefit of the smallholder farmers. If you have smallholder farmers with access to credits at the beginning of the season, you can emphasize a productive season for the smallholder farmers because he goes to farm early, he farms quality produce, right, and he has better value for money at the end of the season. Now, when you create an opportunity for other people to finance him, then you create an ecosystem that runs cycle to cycle, end to end, because everybody has a part to play Investment horizons are clearly defined and everybody's inputs, everybody gets value out of the whole ecosystem. And that's what we are putting together at Apex. Over the past four years, we've done some pilots in terms of input financing to small order farmers. And we think we are at the right spot where we can bring in capital market players to invest in this sector through this scheme. And when we get there, then we can now go a step or further, listing these notes on the exchange where traders can buy in a sell at any point in time. From the Cold Cash Crop 2.0 event, it is clear that the rural smallholder farmers must be integrated into the payment system infrastructure through digitization that will make them viable economic agents.